watching Raw with Marty Gallagher and J.P. Bryce on ICTV. Today we're going to have a little discussion about kettlebells and what a great tool they are. So, um, Marty, you've got a, a bit of an unusual take on kettlebells. You kind of think their value as a, a cardio tool is underappreciated. Let's talk about that. What are you talking about when you say that? Well, I think that... Uh the primary usage of the kettlebells would be fair to say as a explosive strength or strength endurance tool, right? I think, I think an under appreciated aspect of the tool is the fact that as a, an aerobic tool, it's really without peer. If, if you put it in mathematical terms, let's say we put it on a calorie per minute burn rate, which is a very objective frame of reference. And again, we're, we're assuming that we have you know, accurate science in terms of assessing the, you know, the calorie per minute rate. Uh, having said that, <clears throat> when you compare the, the differing modes a kettlebell expertly used, uh, particularly if the kettlebell movement incorporates the legs, it's like off the charts uh, in terms of uh, you know how far above other tools it is. Uh, some of the some of the heavier kettlebell experts are generating incredible calorie per minute burn rates and then sustaining those rates for, you know, 40, 50, 60 minutes. Like, lo they're, and, like uh, they're like locomotives. <laughs> right? And one exercise in particular that you reference in uh, our last kettlebell article, which is at ironcompany.com in the article section, you, uh, you reference the kettlebell snatch and the because of the long rep stroke and uh, mm -hmm. that it's, um, you know, such a great calorie burner. You know, you, you're involving the the entire body, and you know, I've done some research, and it, it looks like uh, people that are doing those sort of exercises with kettlebells, you're burning about 20 calories a minute. You can. So much is dependent upon your your body weight. A, a, yeah. a big engine burns more than you know a 61 cubic inch. <clears throat> one liter engine, right? Sure. So I have a I have a friend named Dave Whitley who's uh, uh, Dave's probably been a kettlebell instructor at the top of the heap for 15 years. Big guy. <clears throat> Dave is kind of a you know I'd say 240, maybe 250, right? He is able. I forget what his poundage was. I can't remember. I think it was a 36, I don't know, I can't remember the kettlebell graduations. I don't think, it, it wasn't a 54, it was less than a 54, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, he slung that thing around, I think, for 40 minutes and averaged, oh, I don't know, 26 calories a minute or something. And at the end of the 46 minutes, I think he'd burned 2,000 calories. That was incredible. And, and again, he was not like, it didn't, it didn't put him in the hospital. Yeah, he extended himself, but, uh, um, you know, it just, it was a good demonstration of how, because you stress out all the limbs, right? When, when you're doing a snatch <clears throat> with both hands and you're incorporating the legs, all of a sudden, all four limbs or uh, spring into action, and how much more cardio efficient is that than just simply sitting on a stationary bike and just using your legs? Right. Yes, yeah, four limb cardio, like Dr. Len Schwartz always. Uh, yes. You know, that was, did that we, was his theory. Did we, po did we post that article yet on Len? No, we're getting ready to. Good, 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 good. Len uh, Schwartz was the inventor of heavy hands, and he was the first guy to point out to me that quad limbed cardio was superior to, you know, leg only. Uh, and he got that from the cross country skiers. He was looking at VO2 maxes and he noted that 
the, cro the champion cross-country skiers were generating the highest VO2 maxes on record. And he was like, why is that? And he said, well, because they, they push with their arms, right? Yeah. Very similar to if you have your kettlebell, you know, you're switching off. What are you doing? Well, you're incorporating arms and legs. So it's a, it makes for the most efficiency. Len used to say, you burn twice as many calories and it feels like you're working half as hard. Right. Love that. Yep. Yeah, because you're distributing the energy, you know, throughout the entire body instead of on just the two limbs or whatever. You're spreading the effort. You're, right. You're spreading the love. And you can and you can rotate it, right? I mean you work yep. let's say you work the right arm. Till so that's fatigued, all right, well, let's switch off to the left, right? Yeah. You know, and then now the right the right is resting up, boom, back and forth. And you can incorporate other, I mean, you could do, you know, why, why stick to, to one movement? I would think it would be best to rotate through a sequence of movements, spreading the, I mean, if it's a cardio, I mean, you know, we're not trying to become better snatchers or better swingers are better at the Turkish get-up, we're looking to create the highest sustained cardio effort, right? Right. So to do that, I would segue from one movement to another, to another, to another, and, you know, spread, you know, go around in a big circle. That way you can maintain optimal intensity by moving the effort around from, you know, upper body to lower body to back to, you know, arms to whatever, right? And you rotate the effort sequentially and it, and it, you end up with a much higher report card at the end of the cardio session in terms of, again, objectively, mathematically, how many calories did you burn? What was your... Uh, age-related heart rate, blended session average for your heart rate. I mean, that's concrete stuff. That's what we look for. We want to quantify the intensity of the cardio session. And if you are able to do that, what you find is kettlebells amp you up like no other tool, if they're used properly. Right. What's the difference? Well, pick one or the other, you know. I mean, are we going to pick a big bell and do 10 with either hand every minute and rest? Well, you know, let's say, all right, so let's say you do, uh, I don't know, how many times does it take to do 10 snatches with the right hand and then 10 snatches with the left hand? Whatever's left over the minute, rest then repeat, right? That's burst. All out, recover, hit it again. All out, <clears throat> recover, hit it again. How long does it take you to recover? Over time, you want to reduce, reduce that, uh, the, the recovery time. That's an indicator of our fitness, right? The less time it takes us to recover between all out sprints, the fitter we are. And the longer that we can sprint, go all out before we tie up and are forced to quit because of lactic acid buildup, the, you know, that's what we seek. That's what we, that's what we're looking to do. Become fitter. And those are two of the benchmarks, mathematical benchmarks that we use. Okay. We just don't float around riding a stationary bike texting. Right. No, you're quite involved. I mean, you really got to pay attention to what you're doing when you're working with the kettlebells, like like we talked about earlier. If you're not paying attention, uh, one of those kettlebells may just end up out the window. Or in your head, more than likely. I mean, you have uh, the a live tool forces you to be engaged. If you get on a, 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 a you know on a static tool like a stationary bike or. Uh, 
<clears throat> what's the one that the guy with the ponytail, the gazelle, that's my favorite, the gazelle, right? Uh, it, well, you have one of those. You, <laughs> I should. Uh, you can just space out, right? You can't right. do you can't do that if you've got a a thirty six pound kettlebell over your head. No, you can't. Or if you're sprinting all out, right? You're outside and you're you know, and it could be you could be sprinting on the ground. You could be sprinting in the water. You have to be engaged. Yep. Now, steady state, as the name implies, is that you try to uh, attain and maintain the highest possible pace for the duration of the session. You predetermine the session length, right? Whether it's 15, 30, 40, 45, whatever, the, you predetermine the length of the session. And then the goal is to establish the highest possible even pace for the duration of the session. Even Steven all the way through, right? Yeah. That, uh, you want to, with steady state, you want to exert as few muscular contractions as possible. You want to glide, right? Because muscle contractions equate to oxygen consumption. Comprende? So if you glide, you have the fewest possible, you use, you make the best use of your oxygen, so you're the most efficient, which is what a endurance runner wants. A sprinter, on the other hand, it's like, you know, it's like a dragster, right? Yeah. So I'd say the, uh, the kettlebell swing would be a great exercise for steady state cardio. I think you should mix it up again. I think you should shift from one beautiful movement to the other, to the other, to the other, and move around. That's one of the beauties of being on a kettlebell. You don't have to be locked into one damn thing like you are in a machine. No, let's flow. Let's open up. Let's let's do overhead presses now. Let's do uh, uh, double kettlebell uh, front squats now. Let's do, uh, you know, uh, there's things where they walk on the ground and they pick a kettlebell up and walk and bang, and, you know, now you're going to, jump up and do something else, you know what I mean? And you can spread the effort from the legs to the torso to the abs to the shoulders and back around again, and that way you you can keep keep a, a good level going at high optimal intensity without burning out. I mean, you know, maybe I last about 20 minutes doing that. But if I use that... that And you can always put one down and pick up a lighter one and keep going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's that's that's the beauty of it. If it's like, okay, you know what? This is a little arduous. Well, let's pick up a little one and keep keep the party going. Because you're well, looking, you're looking, this. you're looking to burn calories and accelerate the metabolism. You are asking the wrong guy. <laughs> I am so out of the kettlebell world. I could not tell you. My, I, you know, we always refer back to YouTube. I mean, if you can find a reputable instructor on there, and there's lots of them. Hey, Phil Scarito is <laughs> Phil Scarito is my friend. Don Berry is my friend. Mike Crift is my friend. I mean, they're they're kettlebell. They're good kettlebell instructors. They're like mushrooms after a rainstorm, man, they were everywhere, right? Yeah. I mean, just look in your neighborhood. <laughs> but, what is, uh, <laughs> what's fasted cardio? Oh, 
Okay, that, that's, I'm glad you asked me about that. That's a good question, buddy. Um, elite bodybuilders have a, a really cool trick of the trade that's very effective for fat burning. And what, what it is is that uh, they figured out that if, if you have a really intense cardio session when your glycogen stores are low or, better yet, exhausted, uh, the body will then burn its second favored fat source, a uh, sec second favored fuel source, which is stored body fat. So the idea is that if you sleep at night, obviously you're not eating while you're sleeping, right? So that's called a sleep fast. So if you get up <clears throat> before you take in any carbs, which is uh, glycogen is, uh, think of it as emulsified carbohydrate. So if you hit a hard cardio session, like we're talking about, like a like a really good burst session or a high steady state session, uh, the body will burn through whatever residual glycogen you have coming off the sleep fast and then start burning up body fat. And if you go to a heavy bodybuilding area first thing in the morning, you'll see top guys all over the place on all the machines doing their toward cardio first thing in the morning to to really burn off that fat. And they actually have another little iteration of that where in order to deepen the glycogen depletion, they'll actually not take in any carbs past like three or four o'clock the previous afternoon. They can still have protein. They can still have a big steak for dinner, you know what I mean? Or maybe yeah. even a salad. Fiber, fiber carb doesn't really impact uh, glycogen to any significant degree it's too uh, not dense <clears throat> so you can deepen uh, the effect of the sleep fast by cutting back on the previous day's carb intake uh, and it work, works like I mean it really does work and it works for anybody who's got the discipline to do it now you can destroy it all by as soon as you're done having a breakfast with uh, you know a big glass of orange juice and a stack of pancakes and or in your case you'd go to what IHOP oh yeah all the time <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were, no I don't do that but I, I, I see what you're saying so you, you can undo like, uh, you can undo the best training effort with bad eating we'll talk about yeah, that absolutely. We'll talk about that in the future. Yeah. So, so basically, you get up and maybe have some water, go to the gym, or go out to the garage, or whatever. How get about, your kettlebells done. How about this? You Come can, on in. Wait, and, JP, and, JP, hold on. How about this? You, yeah. can, you can actually have like a, a protein shake with no carbs. Okay, a like pro a whey protein. Yeah, or coffee. So okay. you, can, you load up in caffeine. You have a, a whey shake, like, like I use Perillo uh, whey protein, I always have, three, three grams of carbs. That's not going to do jack, right? Yeah. So you have your protein shake, you drink your coffee, then you tie into it. Then you get done with your workout, you want to have, a, again, another protein source and a, like a fibrous carb. Bacon and eggs, baby. All you yeah. want. All you want. Sausage and eggs. Go. Uh, ground beef patty and eggs. Or some fish that you acquired from the local fishmonger. For, uh, for breakfast, man. I'm, it's a little too expensive for breakfast. We're, yeah. We're looking more at uh, trying to stay away. We're trying to stay off the biscuits and gravy. Which is what we really yeah. want. That's what we really want, but we can't have. No. I mean, is a, I think it. I think it should be considered right. considered as a cardio tool. If, if you're trying to burn off fat, why not try some uh, kettlebell? Uh, how about some fasted cardio using kettlebells? Burst and yeah. steady state. Mix it up. Who cares? No one's watching. Yeah, <clears throat> but it's a great alternative to getting on the. You know, thinking that you you have to resort to. Uh, 
lot of your tools out there, but this gives you the chance uh, to really mix it up. Yeah. And, you know, and like you said, the time will go faster, you're engaged. Yes. Uh, there's all kinds of benefits here that we just talked about. So and, if you haven't tried kettlebells, pick up a set. Yeah, and you can stand in one spot. You know what I mean? You don't need anything. You just need a kettlebell and some place to stand. And you can create, if you're creative and, and innovative, you can create all the cardio workout you can handle. Sure. Boom. And from an investment standpoint, I mean, you know, kettlebells are cheap. You can get a, pick up a few for the house. They don't take up any room. Uh, you know, what, like a, a what, what much more expensive treadmill or whatever. Not everybody's got the, the funds or the room for that. What, what, uh, what's the, the best, uh, what's the Rolls Royce of what you guys are carrying? Yeah, I mean, yeah. our most popular kettlebell is like a uh, powder-coated kettlebell. What are the handle um, like? Is it the, still the rough, it's the rough-hewn iron handle thing? Yeah, it's got a nice matte finish powder coat handle. And they've got the, the color-coded handle so you can identify the sizes. You know, if you're across the gym and you see the, you know, different colors, uh, they're easy to identify. Mm -hmm. So those are pretty common in, in CrossFit and yeah. But, but, the, but there's so many different kinds of kettlebells. There's competition kettlebells, there's urethane coated kettlebells, rubber with chrome handles. You know, it goes all over the place. It just a, depends on what you want, what kind of handle you want, if you want smooth or rough. Well, you know, there's so many different choices. Here, here's what we know we don't want to um, uh, eviscerate the rawness of the kettlebell because there go the results, right? I learned a couple of things myself. I hope everybody else did. Um, so in closing, I mean, we want to say check out Marty's weekly column Dude. and podcast videos. This is uh, this is currently on Facebook, but what we usually do is turn it into a YouTube video, and we also post it on the site. So if you missed anything, uh, there's all sorts of different places to go back and, and watch. And if you're lucky... Uh, sometimes you get to see Marty get up at the end and just walk away. That's always fun. <laughs> and uh, so check out the weekly column that that Marty does for us. It's Raw with Marty Gallagher. You can find that at ironcompany.com. You can go to the article section at the top of the site and, and punch that, and you'll see all of uh, Marty's articles. He's been writing for us for a few years now, so we've got quite a stack of different things covering all different subjects. Um, if you're looking for for uh, kettlebells, we've got some good ones. There are premium powder-coated kettlebells with color-coded handles, large numbers, non nice functional matte finish. Non-eviscerated. Thank you.